Hi, my name is Jeff Olson, and welcome to the abridged version of The Slide Edge. It's really an honor to have an opportunity to talk to you before you listen to the reading of The Slide Edge. You know, this is something that's been a labor of love for myself, and it comes from a lot of experiences I've had in my life. I've been very fortunate in life as I've worked for different companies, built different companies, been the CEO of a company, built large drug sales companies. A few of experiences, I've seen a lot of things that work, and I've seen a lot of things that don't work. And what I've done through time has always kind of been a student of what makes that happen, and that really is the product that created the book, The Slide Edge. What I'd like to do now is give you some insights uh, to The Slide Edge, how I see it, but more importantly, right now, I'd like to just describe how it came about. I think if you kind of have that frame of reference as you go through the reading of The Slide Edge, you'll have the, the insights and the awareness and the kind of the framework to understand what we're trying to do to make The Slide Edge work for you. It began with me after all the experiences I had in life. I was, I was very, very fortunate in my life, and I was put in a position where I was the founder and the CEO and chairman of a company that turned out to be one of the largest personal development companies in North America. And what this was was a TV channel that was connected to a direct sales force. And with that, what we did is we produced information that could change people's lives, things about your family, your finance, your health, relationships, career, sales, you know, any information that you needed to build your life, we created and we produced that and we put it on a TV channel seven days a week, 24 hours a day. At the other end, we had a direct sales force. And these are people I called the choir, people who really believed in personal development. We connected the two to create a company that would take information to people. And so that was our goal. Through this process, two things I learned about information. It was very interesting. And I started sitting back, and here we are, the biggest producers of personal development information. We could put it in somebody's house seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So in essence, we had really maximized the ability to take information, using technology, and to get it into people's homes. So there's a simple question. Think about this. If information and technology was the answer, would you not agree all the problems we have would be fixed right now? Matter of fact, you know, there's more information today available than there's ever been. There's more technology to get that information to people uh, than there's ever been. So if information and technology was the answer, there would be no problems. There would be no financial problems. There would be no relationship problems. There would not be any health problems. But that's not the case. The fact is, from a health standpoint, you know, obesity has grown three or four fold in just the last 20 years. Finances are worse now than they've ever been. We're saving less money today as a society than we've ever have. Relationships have been falling apart at a rate over the last 20 years like we've never seen before. But at the same time, information and technology has grown 10, 20 fold. And so my question is, if information and technology is the answer, would you not agree it'd be going the other direction? Well, the fact is there's something that makes information and technology work. Think about this. If information and technology was the answer, what I'd do is I'd walk up to, say, an alcoholic. And I'd give that alcoholic a uh, Alcoholic Anonymous CD. I say, congratulations, you're no longer an alcoholic. Because what I did is I took information and I gave it to him through technology. But if that was the answer, he would be fixed, right? Well, that's not the answer. What makes information work is that when you put it in the proper environment and associations, what makes Alcoholic Anonymous work is not because you just give them the information and technology. You have to have that. That expands it for them. But you have to change their environment and associations. So that was my first goal. The first thing I learned in building that company is it wasn't just good enough to get information in people's hands. It wasn't just good enough to use technology to expand people's awareness. You had to put people in the proper environment and proper associations to make it work. So that was number one. And that was really the beginning of my thought process for the slide edge. After that, the other thing I learned, and this is very, very interesting, here we were with all this information technology, driving it into people's minds, put them in the proper environment associations to absorb that information. But again, I'd watch these people, the sales force, people who were really were believers, or again, what I called the choir, what I saw is for many, many, many of them, actually most of them, it still didn't work because what they didn't have, in my opinion, was a processor. And that was really where the slide edge came from. They did not have the ability to take that information, even in the proper environment associations, and process the information in a way to make it work here was the problem. Everybody talking to them was talking to them from a quantum leap standpoint. What I mean by that, they're trying to show them the fastest way to solve the problem. And that makes sense because if you want to sell something, if you want to sell a book or a tape or a seminar, what are you going to tell people? We're going to show you the slow way to success? No, you're not going to do that. You're going to say, we tell them we got the answer with a quantum leap answer. And really what it does is it violates the natural harmony of how life works. When you think about it, there is a natural harmony in everything how it works. You know, you plant your seeds, then you cultivate, and then you harvest. 
The sad thing is what everybody's doing is trying to tell you, you plant your seeds and then you cultivate. What the book The Slide Edge is all about is, yes, you have to plant your seeds, and yes, there will be harvest, but there is a cultivating process, and that anybody can do it, and their quantum leap is not the answer. The answer is doing the easy things, the simple little things, and doing them consistently over a period of time, over a long enough period of time to make it work for you. And here's what I found out, and this is an interesting uh, thing I learned from a gentleman named Jim Rowan, and I reflect off Jim Rowan a lot in the book The Slide Edge. He said there's, you know, everything to be successful in life is easy to do. He also said that it's easy not to do. And I found that very interesting. If it's easy to be successful, why are most people not successful? Because it's easy not to be successful. What he talked about is all the time you have decisions you have to make. And what successful people do is they make the simple little decisions, the simple little disciplines, make those decisions consistently over a long enough period of time. So literally the compounded effect kicks in. What most people do, though, is they make the simple error in judgments. They take those decisions, things that they can do that are easy for them to do, but they make the simple decision not to do it because they believe it doesn't matter at that moment in time. And that's what the book The Slide Edge is all about, is that your decisions do matter. Every decision you make every single day does matter. Every decision does compound either up or down. Every decision is either going to take you to success or it's going to take you to failure, and it's happening every single second of the day. So that's what the book The Slide Edge is all about. You see, what I have found through my experiences and observations is that most people live what I call an action-oriented life. And that's good. You've got to be in action. You've got to be in movement to be successful. You know, everything that's directed at you, all advertisements are about action. All books and tapes that you read or listen to are about action. But the truth is, if it's just action-oriented, what we do is we tell you how to be successful. We just tell you how to be healthy. We just tell you how to have relationships. We tell you how to have financial independence. And it would happen. But There's two things that have to happen before the actions work for you. And this is very, very important. And again, this is the foundation to the slide edge. And what I mean by that, to be successful, you have to have good philosophies, first of all. Philosophies is everything you know. It's everything you know, how you hold it, how it affects how you think, and how it affects what you do. Your philosophies will turn into your attitude. If you have good philosophies, you'll have a good attitude. Your attitude then direct your actions. Now we're at actions. If you have a good attitude, you have good actions. Good actions turn into good results, and good results turn into a good lifestyle. So think about it. If somebody has positive philosophies, again, that comes from the books you read, the tapes you listen to, and probably most importantly, the people you associate with. You have good philosophies that will turn into a positive attitude. That will turn into positive actions, which turn into positive results, positive lifestyle. But if things aren't happening for you, if somebody's out there and they're going through the actions, they're doing the the actions they're supposed to do to have success, but they're not having success, use if you look backwards, what you'll find is they don't have good philosophies. They don't have good information driving the way they think. It's turning into a negative attitude, and they're taking that attitude and doing the actions wrong. Those actions are turning into bad results, turning into a bad lifestyle. So what I've always suggested to everybody, and this is real critical, what the slide edge is all about is getting you to create this processor so you can take this information. This is abundance of information that's available. There's more information, again, today than there's ever been. There's more access to information through technology than there's ever been. And taking that information and making it work for you. But to make that happen, you have to have what I call, again, the processor, or you have to have what I call the philosophy and attitude. The slide edge is a philosophy. It's a way of looking at information and processing that information so that you have a good attitude that now takes those actions and turn them to good results. It's always been very interesting for me to see seemingly two very, very similar people. And I've seen this over and over in corporate America and small business America and businesses I've owned and businesses I've run. I've seen people very, very similar to each other, having the same product, the same company, the same opportunity. They're being trained in the same actions. They basically have the same ability to do the same actions. One person takes those same actions in the same marketplace, the same product, the same company, and they have success with it. And the other one takes the exact same thing seemingly the same quality of a person, and they don't have success. And what you'll find is if you back up and look at those two different people, you'll find one of them has based their life on positive philosophies, positive books, positive tastes, positive associations, that's created a positive attitude. The other person has made a bad slightest decision. They've made a decision that that information really doesn't matter, that, you know, that the people they associate with doesn't matter, and it's turned into a negative attitude. They don't even know it exists. That attitude affects their actions. It's so slight, you can't even see it, but eventually that compounds over time, turns into bad results, and they have a bad lifestyle. So again, you know, really the slide edge has really been a slide edge evolvement for myself. What I mean by that, it's come from a lot of observations, a lot of things I've seen that work, have not worked. You know, when I started that company, that personal development company and built that TV channel, 
My goal was to change people's awareness, to give them more access and awareness to information and use technology to get it to them. As I did that, I realized that environment associations were as important as access to information and technology. But as I went through that process, then I realized really, quite honestly, even with people who willingly wanted the information, who were part of the choir, who really believed in the information, and would have to give it to them directly, they still didn't have the processor because they had been trained over time by society, by marketing, by advertising to look for the quantum leap. And that's what led to the slide edge. And that is everything you need to do to be successful. It's easy to do. It's easy not to do. You know, what successful people, they do the simple little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them. They make exercise those simple disciplines and they just do them over and over and over and over till the compounded effect kicks in and it leads them to success. What unsuccessful people do is they make that simple error in judgment. They think it doesn't matter when they make that decision. They think it doesn't matter when they don't do something that day that they should do. Now, what they don't realize is that simple error in judgment compounded over time does make a difference and can take you in the wrong direction. So that's what the book's all about. It's about actions. It's about the processor. It's about the slightest decision that every decision you make every single day does matter. You know, as I talk about these decisions you have to make, you know, one of the foundations for making good decisions is having good knowledge. You know, here's what I found in everything that we all go through. You know, everything that you become successful in or not successful in, at one point in time, you have to start. You have to start the process. And, and what I found is when anytime you're starting something, that's really when you're your lowest level of knowledge, and your highest level of anxiety. And the goal is to move your knowledge up and your anxiety down. You know, just think about any time you've gone to work for somebody, those first 90 days, you're kind of in the fog, you're in the clouds because your knowledge is low. And as your knowledge goes up, your anxiety comes down. And here's what I found. There's a simple four-step process for increasing your knowledge and reducing your anxiety. And why this is important is slide edge. It's because the slide edge is about making decisions. And when you make decisions, it's about making good decisions. Good decisions affect your knowledge. Bad decisions affect your knowledge also. And the question you have to ask yourself, do you want to have good knowledge growing or do you want to have bad knowledge? You know, your knowledge can grow. If it's bad knowledge, it's not going to really relieve your anxiety. It's going to create more anxiety. So you have to have, again, another process or something in your brain that's teaching you all the time how to grow your knowledge. And so I've gone through a four-step process. The first one it's what I call learned knowledge. It's pretty obvious. You need, to, you need to learn about whatever you're trying to do. You know, you need to read the books. You need to listen to the tapes. You need to talk to the people. You need to learn the information. That's kind of an obvious one, but we have to go through learned knowledge. Now, learned knowledge leads to probably one of the most difficult ones, and that is activity knowledge. That is doing the activity. You know, in this book, I'll reference a, a great philosopher. His name was Emerson. Emerson said something I've always thought was great. He said, do the thing, you'll have the power. He didn't say, I'm going to give you the power to go do the thing. He said, do the thing. He said, what he's meaning is you learn in the activity. Do the thing and you have the power. What most people want to do is you give me the power and I'll go do the thing. Or in essence, you tell me what exactly to do and I'll go do it. Well, you know, Watson, the founder of IBM, he said the key to success is to double your rate of failure. Literally, you have to fail your way to the top. But what most people do is they sit there, they go through learn knowledge. I've seen this so many times. And then all of a sudden, they don't transfer learn knowledge to activity knowledge because they live in fear. Matter of fact, later on in this book, when you're, when you're listening to the reading, there, there's going to be a story about the funeral. And it's a very great story. I really want you to pay attention when it comes up because it talks about how we live in our comfort zone and how we worry about what other people think. And the story was something that changed my life many, many, many years ago. And what it did is it allowed me to take my learned knowledge and turn it into activity and quit fearing rejection, quit fearing failure. Because if you do that, you'll never get going. And so learn knowledge, number one, you have to have that, but then eventually you have to turn it into activity knowledge. And here's the thing, it's interesting, these work hand in hand with each other. You learn something, then you go out and do the activity, then you go back and learn again, then you go back and do the activity. It's, like, it's kind of like learn knowledge, activity knowledge, learn knowledge, activity knowledge, and you kind of step your way up the ladder. You can't just go from the bottom to the top in knowledge just by learning. You just can't study, 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 study. And you can't just go to the top by just doing the activity. You can't just do the activity and not have the knowledge. And so it's learn knowledge, activity knowledge, back to learn knowledge, back to activity knowledge. And it's always been very interesting. I can take a book and read a book and I can put it on my shelf. I can come back and read that exact same book 
a year later, and it's as if somebody snuck into my place, rewrote the book, because what's happened to me is I've gone out in life, life's experience has affected me, the activities I've gone through, so that I go back and reference the same book I read a year ago, it's different. So I'm stepping up the ladder. I can take the exact same book and go from learn knowledge to activity, go back to that same book, learn knowledge, and I go back to a higher activity. So learn knowledge and activity knowledge work hand in hand. And what that leads to, and this is very, very important for me to be successful, is modeling knowledge. 